And, and this is somewhat the essence of, of the, such innovation work streams. Yeah. Right? That, that, yeah. that research and engineering interplay very tightly. So we share results, we're confident about. The paper is not written yet for the academic conference, but it also doesn't have to be uh, at that point, right? We profit a lot from this exchange of, of uh, ideas and insights. So, yeah. One of the value we have with the innovation stream at the moment is that we are able to deal with failure as well because we are quite early in the process, which means that if one of the outcome would be, oh, it can't work, it's great because it's better to know that it can't work after a few yeah. months in innovation yeah, rather than trying to, trying to find something for years. So I still remember when this uh, when Paras got uh, got steam. It was like you know we were discussing these uh, partner chains and bridges and so on. All of a sudden, these finality uh, or settlement times they came up on on our table again. And as usual, then we just uh, you know we we I mean we try to understand the question, the need, the requirements. We get we try to assemble a team, uh, and then kind of the real uh, the research work starts. Right? It's like it's open sky to some extent. We have some you know we model the the restrictions that you know are out there but uh, at that point it's like it's a research question and you don't know you know where will you end in the end <laughs> so it's like uh, there is a lot of variance there uh, which also makes it hard then to to kind of uh, find a find a, a timeline right some research question you can answer in just a couple of days right. and some some famous results took took years to establish so right um, and you you know you, you need an idea like for for a a change to the protocol or an entirely new protocol and then once you have the idea you have to think about well is it actually secure and then if you think it's secure then uh, you know can you actually prove it right so this uh, it's a long process of uh, trying to to uh, you know but, see what the landscape looks like but yeah. i think it's interesting that you mentioned the word variance because variance um uh, variance is where value is you know if, if you're if you're produ pr pr producing cars, or even cars nowadays are not even produced at that, but yeah, I don't know, toothbrush, uh, they're all the same, and you want to reduce variance. But if you are if you are building a whole new ecosystem and protocol, and you want to do it in a secure way, an innovative way, and provide value to people, variance is where value is. So I think we shouldn't be shy about you know mentioning the fact that yeah, it it's 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 hard. Uh, it, 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 it's hard, therefore it has a lot of variance, but therefore there's a lot of value because if it was easy, yeah. everybody and would And I do. think that that's exactly where, uh, where we need kind of a very good process. So it's kind of, we have to cope with that variance, but still we have to be able to make reasonable progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Paras, I mean, once we had some intermediate, let's say, solution where we had high confidence that it, uh, that it would work, we, we assembled a, a workshop between uh, research and engineering to kind of to convey the first ideas. Yeah, I, I remember that first workshop we had in Edinburgh, like... Uh, in the rain as usual. <laughs> so. yeah. No, I remember it was somewhat sunny. I even did a run in a park, so it was... <laughs> in Edinburgh you have, you know, the yeah. chain, the weather changes it's sunny every day. 10 minutes, it's sunny so it's sunny every day, I, but it also rains I feel like, all uh, our workshops in Edinburgh are like in November. Yeah, that's... The, that's so the, this that's one was in November too. Yeah. Yeah. But I, no, I really... It was, it was uh, early October. I, I really vividly remember this one where we had the... It, it was really where this ID gel and we yeah. had this long uh, uh, discussion around, okay, what the process look like? Yeah, can it fly I mean, to get back attrition? That's even, I, I even remember that's where we started writing the first line of code of the prototype. And that was very where the, this whole uh, innovation stream started, where we had this collaboration. And the pip, I think, uh, yeah, the paper was not even written. It was like a, a, a bunch of docs, Google docs, and we yeah. have all these IDs floating around, and it was not yet perfect. And that, and, and this is somewhat the essence of, of such innovation work streams. Yeah. Right? That, that, and, that research and engineering interplay very tightly. So we share results we're confident about. The paper is not written yet for the academic conference, but it also doesn't have to be uh, at that point, right? We, I mean, as we said before, we, we profit a lot from this exchange of, of uh, ideas and insights. So, yeah. So basically, well, yes, we start, we, we start with the first workshop in October. Yeah, it was October, yeah. Mm. Officially, I think we have started the work on the innovation stream early January, mid January, or mid February, mid February probably. Mm, so no, yeah. not really. So I would say we started. Um, so 
we had a discussion around October, then uh, a bit of you know adjustment, trying to find the people. Um, I remember starting. I, I remember starting discussing uh, with Sandro and uh, with the rest of the team a bit about various. Uh, we we had a discussion around formalization. So, you know, trying to do some small experience early December. That uh, I think that the first report I, I made to to uh, to to the stakeholders was really mid December or something. Then finding more finding the the really the prototyping team, more the prototype engineers, and assembling the team took us a bit, about one month and a half. And then we. We really started running full speed ahead uh, beginning of February. That was really uh, that, that where this, the team gelled. And then we had the very early results uh, end of February uh, with the prototyping, the whole data queue simulation. I, I remember that's where, but that's about the time where uh, there was a new version of the protocol uh, that happened in March because there was this question around certificates and, and block and votes that would, would be too heavy to move around uh, with the blocks. And then in April we had uh, so I think uh, yeah, that, that actually f there was a funny story yeah. that at some point there was some reason that uh, you know uh, made us think mm. that uh, it's necessary to do a particular thing in a particular way, and then sometimes it happens in research that you know then you make a decision and then you make other decisions, but you, then you notice that one of the early decisions isn't necessary, like you don't, you know, you can now do it differently. And this yeah, is how we discovered a simplification for, for the protocol yeah. that made it much easier to implement. Yeah. And, and it's good we caught this refinement at an early stage. Right. Yeah. I mean, it simplified the, uh, the protocol quite, quite yeah, substantially. That's interesting I mean, at both in yeah. theory, actually, yeah. and, and in, in practice. practice. Well, yeah, because exciting. I remember the, the first version of the protocol was actually more complicated. Yes, yes. It was and, 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 and then and even more, uh, more heavyweight because it has right. more things to move around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th then we had, the, uh, I think, a good la a landmark was really the, the, the workshop we had in April. That was really uh, something that, I think that's where a lot of things gelled together. I think that was gelled. a great workshop. It was a yeah. great workshop, a lot of outcomes. Uh, we, that's where we find large technical reports, the first uh, asking a lot of questions. Uh, and and um, yeah, and then um, I think, and that's not too much in the end, right? It's like. I, I think that's it's where, yeah. yeah, where where where, where, where we're talking about innovation. I think uh, I like to to think about you know this kind of we have this high variance process in the beginning, which is pure research where a lot of ideas and it, I see like you know like uh, uh, oscillations, harmonics, which can go in various direction. And then you are, you have the innovation that comes at some point and say, okay, we are going to dampen this the the, the oscillation, trying to and, and trying to cut down the harmonics and then get into something which is more much more regular. And sometimes you can. Sometimes, so far, I think we didn't have any red flags. So we know, at least for Perez, that we know what, that we can. And then ultimately, what we want to get uh, something which is like regular and very, you know, like a, a smooth sinusoidal that can be implemented by any uh, any device. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the this is just the beginning, I guess. But, uh, but I was about to say that Perez is probably a very good example of a succeeding innovation stream because we have a few back and forth because we needed uh, to review some details but as you said there wasn't any red flag something that would say oh we we have to stop there because it won't work when we will try to implement it because of that and unfortunately there's no way around and we need to go back to think about a totally different idea so it was very successful in this regard and but I still think that one of the value we have with the innovation stream at the moment is that we are able to deal with failure as well because we are quite early in the process, which means that if one of the outcome would be, oh, it can't work, it's great because it's better to know that it can't work after a few yeah. months in innovation in other, rather yeah. than trying to trying to find something for years be, exactly. without being able in, to In other sciences, this is also much more appreciated, right? yeah. that you document failure because no one else should try it or can can see what you, what you wanted to do and maybe someone finds the reason mm. why your approach didn't work, but maybe there's a tweak and it oh. could work. So reporting being transparent and reporting about things that, but that don't work is, is I uh, yeah. and I almost equally important. Yeah. And I think that's actually one of the reasons why we try to work this way and why we think working this way is an improvement, actually. Because first, it minimizes the 
the impact of a failure. And second, we are trying to do this in isolation to what the production team are doing. So what people that will actually implement the solution are doing, which means that whether it succeeds or it fails, doesn't impact them directly. It will impact their future work if we succeed, because they will have something new to implement. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't succeed, there's no disruption in their work. We are, we are working in isolation. I, I was about to say total isolation, but it's not the case, because obviously we, will, we are talking with people who, who are the potential implementer of the solution. But we are isolated well enough so that whatever we are doing, it doesn't impact their daily, their daily job, actually. It doesn't impact what they have to do on, the, on a daily basis, because they shouldn't look at what innovation is doing to decide what they have to do on their daily, on their daily job. And having this clear distinction is a major improvement. I think it's about the impact of change. Yeah. Really. Being able to cope with change yeah. very early in, this, in the process and say, okay, yeah. um, we changed the per has changed maybe two or three times yeah, already. I have the impression it was very easy to, you know, make these changes a little lower down on the, or yeah. like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> or but it was very easy to <laughs> make yeah, these to stay, changes. To stay agile, yeah. essentially. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that, that's really reactive to change. Uh, that's yeah, really the true sense of agile. And that, that's yeah. really something I, I have been personally interested in, in a few years. And, uh, I'm not talking about. Uh, I mean, I'm not talking about Jira or you know the, the agile we know, which is a very straight, uh, a straight jacket process. It's more. It's really more about fail fast and try and trying to put yourself. Uh, and I think that a lot of people are kind of pitting agile and f and, and formality or, or agile and rigor against each other and saying, oh yeah, you, when you do agile, you can you know it's kind of like. A, yeah, you do whatever you want. No, you don't do whatever you want. Actually, you, it, it has to be super rigorous because you want to know when you fail exactly. as early as possible. And so Exactly, it's about knowing when you have to adjust your path, right? Yeah. And very early on. Right? And it's very experiment-driven. I think that's something we try also to, and something we did a bit differently from the, uh, the, 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 way, the previous way we were doing, really trying to put ourselves in a, in a to, to set up experiments, or we want to, we want to, we want to do X. We we want to verify that uh, that uh, we want to verify that. I mean, give that example all the time, but we want to verify whether or not we can move votes fast enough. Oh, so we do an experiment to prove it, and then we the experiment gives us some results. Yes, no, and then we we have we have more answer more questions too. And that's something we didn't really, in my experience, were not so good before. Yeah. Uh, that's why that's why we need a process. We need a good process. We need a refining mm -hmm. it. We need refining it and. Maybe Hydra was a good example because we also work on this together, right, Sandro? Yeah. And the, the way the, the 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 way the implementation of the research work it was, was more, less. Yeah, like we wrote a research paper at some point, and then for a few months uh, we moved on to other projects, yeah. and then the implementation started. And uh, you know, it's it's hard to go yeah. back to something you thought was like over, and then you have to read it again and see what you know what you were thinking at the time to answer the questions the the engineering a team might have and uh, so the com in contrast to to what we're doing now you know it, it was uh, a lot more difficult and now it's just you know we're 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 actually still you know uh, we're all on the topic yes right? yeah, so it's not still, like consulting it's like it's, style it's in the cache yeah it's in the cache and, and whenever a question yeah, it, comes really, it's a it's a yeah, 10 it's second easy. thing to, to write an answer uh, which uh, yeah really makes everything a lot easier yeah i remember i was also involved in hydra like three years ago so yeah. half, and it was also very interesting to take that paper and have uh, i think one of the key issues we had was this the fact that we we started drifting from the protocol that was in the paper and which means that, well, when we, when one or two years down the road, we want to add a specification and want to be more formal, then we have to reverse engineering all the work we did in implementation yeah. with yeah. a paper that kind of, you know, we drifted away from the research actually. Whereas in Peras, my hopes are that once we get this, the CIP and the specification out, it's as faithful as possible to the research paper because the research paper we basically yeah, came out part of the same process. It's really the same yeah, process, yeah, yeah. and I think that. And of course, that doesn't mean the specification and the protocol won't change because they will. But we'll have the tools to also reflect on the research, and I think that's that's the whole feedback loop that, that I, I would like to to get into uh, better.